Welcome viewers to this episode of Conversation with Faisal Rashid. We are here in Fort St. John with Mayor Lilia Henson and we will be talking about the beautiful city of Fort St. John which is located on the traditional territory of Deniza First Nation communities. So welcome Mayor Lilia Henson to the program. Hello, it's great to be here today. Thank you so much. So please tell us about your role as the mayor of the city. Well, as the mayor of Fort St. John, I get to represent the citizens of Fort St. John and together with council, we work together helping to identify the priorities that we hear. We bring their concerns and their ideas forward and then working with our staff, we try and find solutions and put those initiatives into place. Excellent. So please tell us about your current council and your vision. I'm really fortunate. We've got a great council. Uh, they're seasoned, uh, they're eager, they're energetic. Uh, we have a new member on council this year that's adding a lot of good dialogue to the table. And there's a lot of enthusiasm and I'm really pleased to see the discussion and just they feel they're in a safe environment. We're able to talk and discuss and we still leave the meeting and we'll open up the door for each other. And that's healthy dialogue. Thank you so much. Also, please tell us about the hardworking staff and the friendly community of Fort St. John. One of the best things about Fort St. John, it is a fantastic place to work and play, but it's the people that make it special. If you need a hand, if you need uh, help, if you need even a ride, it's uh, our social media just going on there. It just, you know, there's a lot of negativity on there, but there's also a lot of good things on there too. Uh, if somebody has a question, people are eager to help. Uh, and I'd like to go back to talk about the staff in City Hall. I'm really appreciative for what they bring, their knowledge. We hire rock stars. We hire people, they know their, their sector and they give us a lot of good advice and that's what we need. As council, we're there to bring the voices forward of our community and then we go back to staff and we ask for more information. We'll often say, can you give us a report and background information on this? And they come back to us at the next council meeting and that helps inform our decisions and that's in gratitude for their direction. Thank you. I have heard and read you prioritize the citizen. So please tell me about this priority, which is excellent, of course. Well, definitely. The residents of Fort St. John are my priority, as is the businesses. And working together, we work in synergy. We need to have a, a good, strong, healthy community. And that's the role of the city council and staff. It's developing a strong, healthy community. Thank you. Please tell me a little more about the Peace Region and the beauty and the things you, you love about it. To start with Fort St. John and in the Peace Region, uh, we're known for our friendliness, our hardworking, great attitude. And generally, uh, we do have 300 days of sunshine. Today's a bit overcast, but there is a lot going on. In our area, we have, uh, we're fortunate to have many resource sectors. We have oil and gas. We have forestry, mining, uh, agriculture is huge though. 90% of the BC grains come from the Peace region. Excellent. And you know, it's very good to know that uh, the unemployment rate often is so low that it is not even reported. So we are fortunate to live in a community where we have high employment rate and so much of economic development going on. Please tell us a little more about the upcoming economic development projects in our community. I'm glad to say that we do have developers uh, seeking uh, projects here in Fort St. John. Uh, Council, we just recently uh, passed two bylaws to make that possible. And it's a good sign. It shows a healthy, vibrant ec economy when people want to build and invest here. Good, thank you. And about, you know, the pre preserving the environment. So how would you prioritize that? I think Fort St. John has shown a lot of leadership and I'm really proud when I travel throughout the province to be able to talk about the projects that we have. And predecessors before me initiated many of these projects. We have things like our Passive House. Uh, that We had that built I think even before they did in Vancouver. We've got our new RCMP building up the road. It's built to net zero standards. Uh, we're really looking forward to that and having people move in for our RCMP for 2023. We have things like our micro hydro project and that's a really neat project and it has micro turbine and we're able to produce uh, energy and we, we get back about 80, 75 to 80 thousand dollars a year on that. Uh, we have a reclaimed water station so I think it's important that 
it's a responsibility. Being a resource community, we have to show the leadership of what can be done here in the north. And staff brings us projects and ideas. We have EV charging stations here in Fort St. John. Uh, you know, just a few kilometers away, we have Site C. It's showing what can be done uh, responsibly, and I think that we're, we're taking those steps, and when projects and opportunities come our way, we definitely take a look at it to see how it fits with us. Thank you. Also, please tell us about the social services in our community. Well, every community, uh, you know, as much as I we have a lot of great things going for us, but we also have our SCARS as well. And our social service agencies, such as the Women's Resource Center, the Salvation Army are two, uh, just to name a few. And just down the road, we also have um, our Friendship Center. They all help members in our community that are, might be struggling and need a little bit more help. And I think that goes back to what I started with, is the generosity of the community and the businesses, that they know somebody needs help extra helping hand you know and it's not just at Christmas time it's year-round we have a warming shelter on 100th Avenue and it's a temporary project but it's look, looking like it'll be extended in the help with partnership with Northern Health but I was in there one day and it was mentioned to me that the people that are using the services there they needed winter gloves they need more warm winter clothing and the word went out and that same day we had a business come with like a case of gloves uh, excellent. And, uh, you know, we are fortunate to live in a very friendly community with friendly neighbors, community members. And what are the best things you have liked about Fort St. John and the community and the Peace Region as a community member? I'm a first generation Canadian and I have to say with heartfelt gratitude for the people that welcomed my parents. Uh, a lot of them are still like my aunts and uncles. I think it's it's having that warm heart and recognizing that Everybody is special, everyone brings certain gifts and enhances the community and giving people a chance. Thank you. And also, uh, how does the community welcome and integrate the immigrants and, you know, the new arrivals? I think that's kind of a 50-50 thing. I've been really pleased to be invited to different events, you know, with the Philippine Society, uh, for instance. There's been a couple events uh, from India, and I think it's being able to break bread together, uh, share a bit of that culture, and that uh, really helps open up doors and get us to meet each other, meet our families, and it's delightful when you're out and about and you get to see each other, whether you're shopping or at work and your paths cross again. It's having something mutual to discuss that goes a long way. Thank you. And what do you think makes us a wonderful, energetic city? Hands down, it's the people. and. You know, whether it's our teachers in school or our healthcare professionals, our oil and gas workers, uh, we just have good energy. But I think that feeds off of each other. Um, it's all that we do have a lot of positiveness, and that it just gives you that extra bit of energy when you need it. We have long days here, we work hard, we play harder, that's for sure. Uh, I just think that we're able to see that we. We're able to work and we get things done, and that gives you that bit of satisfaction. Thank you. And what does leadership mean to you personally? That is a good question. I think leadership is about helping to build those that are around you, making them stronger, preparing them even to fill your role. It's giving a hand up. That's what leadership means to me. But it, it's also about listening, understanding, having respectful dialogue. But I think the best thing you can do when you're a leader is how can you make the, your, this community better uh, for the next generation. Thank you. And what do you intend to accomplish as a mayor in the next three, four years? Oh, I've got a wish list, that's for sure. And we were talking earlier about our leisure centre. Together with our partners, uh, the Peace River Regional District, we have a, a fabulous leisure pool, but it's time for an upgrade. It needs to be larger. It needs to have more amenities to it. Uh, we're working with a replacement steering committee right now, and we're hoping to go to a referendum later this year, and we'll put the vote to the community. What are your priorities, and you know what do they want to see in it, in addition to having a leisure center we'd like to see it as a multiplex as well having uh, gymnasiums that have the ability to have partitions and walls whether it can be used for soccer or pickleball or basketball volleyball 
we have a very active community and it's of all ages from the wee little ones right up to the seniors uh, everyone is uh, whether it's for bounce and play time to seniors doing lane swim or aqua fit and I think having a healthy vibrant community means we have to have those amenities for all ages and we are a winter city so having a space to uh, exercise and have fun and uh, just to get together with people it's it's important having that indoor space I think will help with attraction and retention in our community it'll be a good investment very good thank you and as you mentioned, you know, uh, being a winter city, we are also here on High on Ice Winter Festival, which is like a signature event. Please tell us about this event. Well, as you can probably hear and see behind us, we have ice carvers uh, here from uh, across Canada, from the Philippines, from Russia, and it's a community event, and it's one that our community really enjoys and looks forward to. I think one of the highlights that we have is our ice slides, and that's sponsored by MNP. And each year we've had, uh, except for one year during COVID, and we'll just to see the faces and enjoyment of the kids and the parents going down the slide. Uh, I'll be going down the slide later tonight. We'll have a challenge. We'll have a slide off with my fellow counselors. And you seriously giggle as you go down. So I think it doesn't matter what age you are. It's something that when we didn't have it that one year, we did hear about it from our residents. And the great thing about this weekend is it's spread out throughout the community. So we have things. We've got a comedy fest. We have a meet and greet with Siberian Huskies. Uh, we have horse-drawn carriage and horse rides. Uh, there's all sorts of things that are going on. There's a sponsored free skate and free swim. And in the park, we're going to have tents set up. Families can come on down. We're going to have some food vendors on both Saturday and Sunday. I think there's also uh, some adult beverages that will be available as well and to close it off on Sunday we're going to have uh, hot dogs for families to come down and enjoy and our annual fire. Thank you so much you know I really appreciate myself as a resident and as a community member of a community is full of activities recreation and please tell us about the educational facilities and opportunities available for residents in our community. One of the things that has really impressed me I'll be invited to schools to give a presentation or talk a bit, you know, what's it like being mayor or why did you want to run for council? And to see the children and the teachers and how much they love what they're doing. That is what means to me that those individuals are in the right spot and they're also helping creating our future leaders. In Fort St. John, we're blessed with uh, whether it's our elementary, junior, high schools, but we also have Northern Lights College and the University of British Columbia also has a site here in Fort St. John. And at this point, viewers, we've changed our location to give you a good idea of the colorful environment behind us. So we'll continue our conversation with Mayor Hansen, and I will just ask her how she gets support from the provincial government. Well, we're very fortunate to have a good working relationship with most of the ministers. Each September, together with council, we go down to Vancouver or wherever the meetings are being held and we bring forward our priorities and we break it down so it's specific per ministry. And we do start that planning process as we are right now. Uh, what are our priorities? What do we want to speak to? Uh, many of the issues that we're hearing from our community, such as health care, education, Taylor Bridge, they fall under the provincial mandate but as a municipality uh, we do represent our community we because we do have that access to the ministers we make it a priority to talk to them about it and we'll go there not only with just you know what our our complaints are but also some possible solutions and throughout the year we're also able to reach out to them whether it's through letters or when they're on uh, traveling around the province and we do ask them to come to Fort St. John come see things firsthand and that's really makes a difference and that's what has given us the the most positive results is when we do get the provincial government here in Fort St. John. Good, thank you. And where do you think uh, you are getting good support from the federal government and what could possibly be done more? 
On that end, I think it's more of our partnership that we have with MP Bob Zimmer as he represents us at the federal level. And his staff is also great. I know firsthand I've been able to send email or pick up the phone and give an office a call. And usually pretty much uh, within 24 hours, I have quick turnaround time and I have a response that I can reply back to people that have asked me a question directly. Thank you. That's encouraging. And Mayor Hansen, finally, I'll ask you, what would be your message for the Fort St. John community? My message would be to get out, enjoy Fort St. John. We're a northern community. Embrace winter, embrace our four seasons, and there is lots to do. If you see somebody who might be sitting at home, give them a call and take them out and show them all the great things that there are to be part of Fort St. John. Uh, thank you so much. It was an honor to meet you here, and we love Fort St. John, and we love our community. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you viewers to have joined us at this episode of Conversation with Faisal. We'll be back soon in a few weeks with the next episode. Thank you so much.